We are here on Insights on Leadership and Life on TSPN TV in Jackson, California. And I am your host, Roberta Pickett, here with Aaron Allard, Jasmine, and Tyler Hadrick. And thank you guys. We are talking about being millennials and also business owners and entrepreneurs at a young age, which is awesome. And then in this last segment, what I'd like to talk about is the challenges you face and overcoming them. And I'm curious if you feel like you have challenges that are unique to your age group or not. And, um, you know, 44% of all businesses fail in the first three years. So you guys have beat the odds of our <laughs> That's good news. That. Um, but you're still coming up on that, Aaron. <laughs> so where do you find encouragement? All that stuff. Well, uh, talk, let's talk about your challenges. Well, we, uh, Tyler uh, touched on it earlier, we find a lot of support from his family who live locally as well, so support with the kids, with bouncing ideas off of business ideas, um, help with anything that we need help with, you know, it, it's really great that we have a support, support system like that. We get a lot of encouragement from people in the community, parents obviously. Um, love having their kids have something constructed to do and so we have a lot of support from local families and you know That's encouragement um, challenges we face is what any business owner uh, faces is just work and family life balancing those two things um, trying not to work trying to work enough to where we can be comfortable but not work too much where we're giving our family life up so do you feel like you have unique challenges because you're young I don't. I don't think they're unique to our age. I think. I don't feel that I way. I think yeah. every everybody that has their own business probably deals with that, whether they're young mm -hmm. or old. When you first bought the place, did, did you find people go, "Whoa, you guys are, you guys are taking this over"? Did you? I think since it was a kids jam, no, it people didn't nice. feel that way. You That's know, because we I might really have felt that way. Really, <laughs> I we're we're taking this over, <laughs> but it, yeah. that went away very quickly. <laughs> the hard part was starting a business and a family and and then we bought and renovated our house all within like two years so that kind of hit us Ooh, pretty hard for yeah. a little bit and, and now it's starting to feel like we're kind of climbing out of that hard patch and yeah, it's been good yeah and my guess is that you're getting to that place of repeatable processes and and so yeah. just having a process that works right. that you don't have to re, you know be recreating all the time. Yeah, we're cutting down on the experiments that, really. Yeah, like it's, that, we know what works and what doesn't. Right. So. Mm -hmm. That's great. Aaron, I would imagine in the real estate area you would have more challenges than something like a, a fitness for kids. Um, I don't know if they'd be more but maybe different um, for sure. Uh, one thing in particular that come, comes to mind um, is just being a woman in in the in the side of real estate that is typically dominated by men. Um, so you know the more commercial side of real estate and you know flipping properties and getting loans and that kind of thing, rather than women typically have the sales role of, of residential mm -hmm. homes. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, uh, you know, I, I had multiple contractors make some kind of comment in some way or another about me being a woman or be, me being a young lady, and it totally chafed me. Um, <laughs> But I, I haven't had. I think the 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 age struggle for for me for a long time because I actually wanted to start this years ago was um, you know people not taking me seriously. Yeah. Um, but now now that I'm doing it, I think you know that gives me a lot of credibility and a lot of confidence as well. And that confidence, um, you know, it, it it shows up in how I talk to people and that feeds this loop of, of credibility. You know, during the break we were talking about your project that you're working on and one of the things we brought up was the fact that there are some people who even um, see the announcement about what? You're giving away a house and is this for real and are, is this a scam? So how do you overcome that? Um, just with the legal facts that, that uh, you know, a B and B in Maine did this before, and we spent weeks of legal research figuring out how to do it legally in California. Um, I think the biggest thing is that it's just so untraditional and so uncommon mm -hmm. for it to be done that flags go off in, in people's minds, and I totally get that. 
um, you know, it's not going to be for everybody. But some people will will think differently about it. And heck, I, I bet a lot of people blow a hundred dollars at the Jackson Rancheria. Yeah, yeah on, exactly. You know, exactly. So why not on a dessert recipe? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and as far as support, uh, my sweetheart, my parents, you know, everyone who who knew what I was doing. Um, even even just small things like, hey, I saw the photos that you posted of the floors mm -hmm. on Facebook. They look so great. That kind of stuff really kept me going sometimes. Um, and, you know, just people being understanding that I can't do things every weekend now because I'm, you know, managing all these moving parts. <laughs> so definitely had a lot of family support like uh, Jasmine and Tyler. Do you find, and this goes for both of, you know, all three of you, do you that you're... Um there are times during the year that are more busy than other times that you have waves or is it now that you're into it it's like whoo, it's not, for the flood not for me so much i think some people would argue that um you know the best time to buy property is in the winter around the holidays and the best time to sell is right after school gets out um but i don't really buy into that i think that there's good deals coming up every time of year um so no, I, I would I'd have to disagree for my own for my own industry. Hmm. Well, good. <laughs> for what us though, yeah, yeah, we like right now is our slow time. You know, families are off camping and traveling, and so um, I think I touched on this earlier. But yeah, this is our slow time, and then it it really kind of spikes in the middle of the winter when kind of need to be kids need to be indoor and indoors and being active. So we feel that the jam definitely does it change then um, do you see that maybe over time that you might have more uh, create more family time in that summer period because it allows you to get away more I'm just curious well yeah well, there's a new uh, shift in the dynamic now too with the little or the oldest one starting school and she's in the bridge program this summer so she in swim lessons and all this stuff is kind of new to her so it's taking and a, new to you yes too. It's, it shifts <laughs> yeah. it shifts our attention a yeah, little bit I bet um, but it's it's all stuff that we we love to do and it's we work it out somehow so but yeah it's um so the start of school is not just the start of school, it's the start of programs and um, picking up other kids and things like that. So it's we're definitely enjoying our slow time, as Tyler puts it. Yeah, so it actually is good from a um, rejuvenation perspective. Yeah. Yes. Time. We definitely have, like, when the October break is going on, we... We go camping, and then when the, the sun, when the winter breaks on, that's when we go on vacation. We kind of have it down to We have to set a, rules, and, like, we need to take this time for ourselves. Yeah. That's good. So you mentioned camping, so that's one of the things you like to do, too, as a family and to get out. You know, probably noticed my yeah. um, book yeah. there. I love backpacking and hiking, too. Um, so is what about you, Erin? Are there other things that you do to kind of rejuvenate? How do you, how do you bring yourself back up when you need some more energy? Quilting and hot springs. <laughs> Quilting and hot springs. And actually, you mentioned at one of the breaks you yeah. like to do make jam too oh, from yes. scratch. Yes, that, like pick the fruit and. Yeah, yeah. There's a, a peach orchard in Brentwood that I'm really fond of. The farmer's daughter is what it's called. I love to pick my own peaches and make peach jam. Uh, I like to make quilts for friends and mm. friends who are having babies and getting married and um, uh, hot springs and, and day spas are also <laughs> high up there on the list. Yeah. yeah. And do you um, Facebook while you're in the hot springs? Definitely not. Oh, good. No, I was going to say, not. that's one place you can let technology <laughs> yeah. go, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what kind of quilting do you do? Because there's I, so many different types. So. Yeah, yeah. There's there's two main camps. The more traditional, which is what you think of when you think of you know classic American quilts. The, yeah. um, but there's a new form uh, kind of coming out called modern quilting, which uses much more vibrant colors and kind of minimalistic designs. Um, so I fall more on the on the modern side. And uh, recently did sort of a collaboration quilt for a very dear friend who chose the fabrics and said here. Oh. And I actually added some other fabrics and turned it into a quilt for her and gave it to her for her birthday, and she cried. Oh, <laughs> so nice. that was, uh, you know, it's great to see your art touching the lives of other people. Um, so that's kind of what I hope to do with transforming houses is I have this creative vision, 
and and if I can execute it well, it creates a beautiful space for a family or someone else to to enjoy. And you know, maybe you guys feel the same way about creating an experience for someone's kid, and that kid comes out, you know, really happy. Um, so that's it right yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah, you've participated in that, uh, it, whether it's the creation itself or the shift in uh, creation, the, the shift right. in the environment, the shift in um, all of the above. And I, I think about, you know, blighted houses, and, mm -hmm. and it does have an impact on our psyche as well as yeah. our vision. You know, we yeah. hate, it's like, ah, darn, wish yeah. that house would pick up itself, you know, you know, and it's not the house that's going to do it. So, yeah. um, but when it does, there's a, a, a rejuvenation of the, I think, of the whole neighborhood. Yeah. Everybody feels it. And it's yeah. like, ooh, yeah. it looks yeah. good. That's true. Maybe I need to <laughs> perk things up a yeah. little bit. Yeah, yeah. That's great. That's good. Well, um, we are coming to um, an close as we get closer to the end here and I just want to say thank you very much to all three of you for being here and for being open I, I really enjoyed our conversation I, I wish we had more time because yeah. Yeah. I think it's fun finding out what you're doing and how you're doing it and you guys show you know there's a lot of bad press about younger people and I, you know it's <laughs> It's frustrating because it's not true. So kudos to you guys. You. Best of Thank luck to much. all of you. I hope that you've just a million people want to get into that contest. Probably. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. Yeah. And um, best of luck to you guys with Boston Alley. So thank you very much. We've been talking here on Insights in Leadership and Life, and I thank you for your time. <laughs>